This is also Music Ministry 101. A 400 mile drive, you load in. After the concert, you go to the fellowship hall and you have pizza that's been sitting there for two hours. You load out, you get a hot, uh, you go to a strange house, you sleep on a couch and it's guarded by an attack cat. Then you get in the car and you have another 400 mile drive and you do the same thing the next day. It is not glamorous. But if you're called, it's exciting. There are plenty of lows. There are plenty of rip-offs. You get to the concert. One of the frustrating things, if you've been in a band and you get to the concert, and there on the youth pastor's desk are the posters that you sent him six weeks ago. <laughs> and the youth went on a camping trip that weekend anyway, and it was already on the church calendar, and so they're not there. It's how you handle the downtimes that will decide whether your ministry will last. About 20 years ago, reading in CCM magazine, John Fisher asked a question, where are the five-year-old bands? And I thought about that at the time, and I said, gee, I don't know any five-year-old bands. Because what we had, we had bands like Petra and Res Band that had gotten in it in the early 70s and had been in it for 25 years, and we had bands that had been in it for six months. Because what had happened, they came in when everybody was a rebel back in the early Jesus music days where you didn't play in churches. They came in with a calling on their life, determined that if I never get a record deal, if I never get a Dove Award, I'm going to play my music. They got in when times was tough. And then in the 80s, it kind of became a business and you could make a living doing it. And so people got in and in six months, if they didn't have a record deal, they got discouraged and they quit. And I think the reason that Rez and Petra and some of those bands from years ago that may be strange names to some of you, the reason that they did what they did is they felt like God had called them. And that's the, that was my purpose in kind of wanting to put this workshop together because I want to see people feel that call of God in their life and be determined to do it. I was in a, the office of the president of a record label one day and there was the president, the vice president, and I, and we're talking, and a band came up that we all knew. And this was a band that had been together for a number of years. They'd leave town with $75 in their pocket. They'd be on the road for three months. They'd play, you know, five McDonald's parking lots, three coffee houses, two detention centers, a prison farm, a crisis pregnancy banquet, and they'd come home three months later with $12 in their pocket, having seen 300 people come to Christ, shouting the victory. And somebody in the room said, yeah, man, those guys are losers. You know, never got a record deal, never got the picture on the cover of CCM magazine, never won a Dove Award, never got any of those things. And I was crying. I said, no, man, they're the winners. They're the winners. The people that feel like God has called them. And, and, and that may be you. You've, you've got a gift that God has called you to to do, to use, and the doors haven't opened for you. And you're going to go out on a street corner. You're an artist, and you're going to go out and take some chalk and draw pictures of Jesus on the sidewalk. You know, you're, whatever you do, do it. There's always a place for you. The nursing homes, the prisons, the jails, there's always a place that your gifts can bear fruit. So, um, hmm. Let me give you a working definition for what I mean, what we mean, when we say calling. Knowing with surety that you are following a path laid out for you by God and being willing to do whatever it takes to stay on that path. Res, Petra, some of those early groups, and even some of the groups today that have been around for years have endured hardship like good soldiers. Whereas other bands quit when the going got tough or when they had financial struggles or when there was no record deal or no acclaim. Do you know that what you're going to devote years of practice and hard work to is what the Lord has planned for you? You know, we have all these nice sayings when God guides, God provides, but that doesn't always mean that he provides fame or silver or gold. A favorite scripture that I so many of us have quoted over the years, a man's gift makes room for him and will bring him before kings. Have you ever heard that scripture? It doesn't have anything to do with your gifts. It's the gift that you give to the king. 